Hi, I'm Bud Summers, Guitar Lessons with Bud, and this is number six in a little series of uh, soloing using chord forms. Uh, the chord forms, we started off with three major forms. We did the F form. Picking out some notes uh, right near the chord tones, but not within the chord, you know, just right there, that we could use when soloing. Uh, we also did the, uh, looks like the D first inversion where you've got uh, We use the A form. Which pretty much puts a uh, major scale right in your hands there. Starting for the fifth scale degree, but... Anyway, that was a nice one. And then we switched over to the minor form. So first we started with the F minor form. Uh, you can play it, of course, anywhere, just like the others were. And then we did the uh, A minor form, uh, looking kind of like this. And... Today, then, we want to take a, a quick look at another form, and this is pretty much based out of a D minor. Now, a uh, D minor chord, you may have learned it one way or another. Uh, the, the traditional uh, with open strings, I had learned it uh, to play it uh, first finger on the uh, first string, second finger on the third string, and then at the second fret, and the third finger on the second string at the third fret. Some people learned it with that fourth finger there. Either way, you have your open open D, A, D, F. So you've got a D minor chord there when you play it in a root position using that open string. You've got a, a D minor. What we can do, though, to make this a nice movable chord form is we can <clears throat> play this with this uh, first, second, and fourth fingers, and then your third finger is just laying right there in a perfect position to go on to this note. This note uh, is an F, of course, uh, a fourth string at the third fret, that's an F natural. That fits in with your D minor chord, of course. It's doubling the uh, third, D, F, A. Doubling the third, we've still got the fifth there, and we've still got the root involved. So we've got this chord. It's easy to move. Uh, we go up here. One of the coolest ways to use this I have found is to... I was doing in the intro and what it is is this <clears throat> this chord yes it's a D minor in first inversion but once you put a minor chord into first inversion you're creating a chord that is interchangeable with the F6 in this case uh, it's the same uh, the voicing makes it sound like an F6 which if you think F A C F would be a regular F chord here F is the root, the third is A, the fifth is C, and then, you know, you double the root or put it at an octave. Now, think about that. You've got a root, a third, a fifth, F, A, C. F is one, G would be two, A is three, B would be four, and then C, F, A, C. That spells out your F chord. Well, if somebody says, well, can you play an F6 for me? Don't look at them confused. Just think your way through it. F is the one. A is the 3. C is the 5th. So if C is 5, what is 6? Well, C, D. And here's what you do. You're getting that D right there on that second string. It's the root of your minor chord that we're establishing. But it's also the 6th of the relative major. I know we haven't done a lot with that uh, stuff. And 
uh, I made mention on the last video that I am going to go back, I think, and, and talk about the Circle of Fifths in some way, ways that we can put them to good use on the guitar. I know some, some of that stuff seems a little esoteric, but as you get uh, further involved, you'll find how uh, knowing the Circle of Fifths and some of the theory things will help you out in pretty much any style of music you're playing. But anyway, so that that's, you know, F6, D minor, call it what you want. So when I do it up here, that's like a G6, right? So if I'm doing this little blues thing, mm -hmm. this is G6, and if you called it an, an F6, you could call it that. I wouldn't, <laughs> but in the scope of what we're doing here, though, if I'm playing a G7 chord, that's a dominant chord. You can hear that uh, seventh in there, which makes it an unstable chord whenever you've got things like that. A dominant chord is going to be a little bit unstable. Um, <clears throat> so right here, we know that sounds good. Okay, that's the G6. That's going to sound good in there uh, across the G chord. When I come down here, though, all I'm doing is very easy, easy to move, a little chord shape. When I come down here, if you look at your notes, if you examine them, we have an F, A, D, and an F. Now think about your G7 chord. What does a G7 chord have? Well, it's got the root, it's got the G. It's going to have G, B, G, B, C, D. G, B, D is what you're going to have in a G chord, right? Well, if you make it a seventh chord, you now need G, B, D, F. So... There's an F, and there's an F. You've just put two Fs in. You're doubling the seventh here. <clears throat> and then the other notes, D, well, that's still part of a G chord, G, B, D. And then an A. Where do you get an A? Where does that come from? Well, in, if you think in your G scale, G, A, that's a ninth, okay? Second or a ninth would be probably preferable to think of it as the ninth. When you have the seventh in and the ninth in, it can be called a ninth chord. And that's exactly what we've got here. So it's maintaining that harmonic structure. C. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a D, and I played a D9 there. He could have gone up here. Other things you can use, I know this is running a little bit long, but other things that you can do here is you can think of your chord tones. Okay, so all the notes within the chord, of course, are good. And on the first string, we can we can take this. And on the sixth string, we've got these two notes. On the third string, both of these notes are safe to use. I like to do that uh, where you've, you've got your uh, G flat, probably call it best, instead of an F sharp. You could call it an F sharp, though. And your F natural uh, and your E. cool stuff though that you can do with this and I, I just always felt that this was just such a neat thing yeah what's that Huey Lewis song that uses it uh...
Anyway, something like that, but pretty cool little chord form. Try and use that, and I'll get back to you soon. We'll talk about some more about the uh, theory things that you can use, and, and maybe all of this makes sense. If not, don't worry about it. Have some fun playing, and I'll see you soon. Bye.